thanks for choosing to watch the video if you enjoy it please think about subscribing sharing and all that stuff um, i'm out here it's a glorious morning i'm fishing for pike uh, but this video is about perch again and we're talking about the ned rig In the last video we had to work quite hard and eventually we found some fish you know we caught one which was great a couple of days later went in with the ned rig and managed to catch uh, another one that was actually bigger so uh, look forward to sharing that with you as i've said before there are four main rigs that i use when i go perch fishing there is the cheb rig there's the jig heads there's ned rigs and there's drop shotting we've been through the cheb rig we've been through jig heads um, if you missed those videos, I'll put the links down in the description. Today we're going to talk about one of my favourite rigs, the Ned Rig. A fantastic rig. What I'm realising is my, my rigs really, they're broken down into rigs that I use for searching. Tend to be your shads, you know, on, on chebs and jig heads and stuff like that. Then once I've found the fish, I want to catch them. Then I'm actually fishing much slower. I'm fishing in a more confined space. There's a bit more finesse involved. And that's really when you go in with either the Ned Rig or the Drop Shot. I used to always go in the Drop Shot. More frequently now, I'm going in with the Ned Rig. Um, they just can't seem to resist it. They're absolutely fantastic. So let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. The Ned Rig is made up of a, a shroom style rounded jig head, you know, around about five grams, um, but that's dependent. And you mount on it a buoyant bait. In most cases, for me, it's a buoyant worm. A massive fan of the TRDs, which are great lures, um, you know, really, really elastic. And I've had some great fish on those. There is a bit of a new kid on the block, and that is the Corum Squirms. And you can't ignore some of the results the guys have been having up the country. You know who you are, absolutely smashing it on these squirms. There's a couple of great videos by Corum. I'll put those links in the description. So it's January, and now is the time to get on the Ned Rig for two reasons. One is the water's getting cold. They're slowing down. Then the fish aren't chasing lures like they were. Um, and for that reason, it's a great idea to fish a little bit slower. And the Ned Rig is fantastic for that. The second reason for fishing it at this time of year is because all the weed is gone. You know, you need a clear bottom. <laughs> you want a clear river or lake bed. You don't want the low lying weed. We're in January, that's all died away. And like I say, now is the perfect, perfect time for the Ned Rig. Let's go out on the bank and I'll show you how I put together the Ned Rig. Okay, so before we start fishing, I just want to show you the Ned Rig um, and go through some of the some of the thinking behind the Ned Rig. I've basically got 10 pound braid going all the way through to a leader, about a six foot long leader of six pound fluorocarbon. That leader then goes down to a small clip that just enables me to quickly chop and change lures. Um, nothing fancy there. And to that, I will just add my rounded jig head that's got the uh, buoyant worm on. Uh, it really is that simple. So um, let's connect it on. Now the principle behind it, it's all based around the fact that you have got this rounded jig head and that you've got a buoyant worm. So if you can imagine, it's gonna sit like that off the bottom, you know, um, where the, the, wor the buoyant worm will sit upright and the rounded jig head will just facilitate it actually getting into that position. Then the way that you fish it is you're casting it out and you're barely moving it. You really are moving it very slowly along the bottom, long periods of static uh, where you're not moving it at all. Uh, and it's gonna just, like I say, sit like that and just move around subtly on the bottom. And that, you know, quite often when it's just static and the flow flow of the river is just slightly moving it that is when they'll get hit 
I think it thinks it's a bait fish that's just on the bottom, on the deck there with its nose down feeding. Um, and then of course the perch comes in from behind and absolutely smacks it. So that's really the principle of the Ned Rig. Let's get on the river and give it a go. As you saw in uh, my previous video, I managed to eventually get a fish after a lot of effort. Um, I've come back again today, same location, and I'm gonna fish a much tighter area now. You know, I'm not roaming. I'm only gonna be exploring about, you know, 100 meters of bank, if that. And I'm going in with a little bit more finesse, uh, see if we can pick up a fish. I'll quickly show you now what lures I'm using on the Ned Rig along this area. So I'm gonna be alternating between these two. Uh, we've got the TRD at the top and we've got the squirm. Uh, and I'll just chop and change between these two, moving up and down the bank, fishing nice and slow, and uh, we'll just see how we get on. So we really have got here just before dark, you know, just fishing dusk, really short session, maybe about an hour and a half long. Um, let's see how we get on. So I was on my way back from Dorset today, Stopped at McDonald's because my lad wanted a burger. Bored in the queue. Um, figured I'd fire off a, a quick message to Matt, Matt Woods at Quorum, who has uh, been having some amazing success on the Ned Rig. And, uh, you know, I'm not too proud to ask, to learn. I feel like I'm always learning. And actually, I was asking her about um, the colours of the squirms that he was using on the Ned. We quickly got onto, onto how he was fishing, like his, his method, if you like. Now, I thought I fished the Ned rig slow. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> uh, he gave me some advice that was just to... I'll show you. He, he gave me some advice just to cast out, let it drop, and then just start tightening up to it. So literally just tightening up to it. Don't know if you can see the rod tip there though. It's really hardly moving it. Long periods of static. And just tightening up to it. With the idea that it's just making it swivel and turn and barely move on the spot. Um, so that's what I've been having a go at today. Um, like I say, never too old to learn something new. If you're interested in the Ned Rig and you're interested in the squirms, um, here's a little bit more information that I, I shot the other day. It's the Ned Rig, and this is the squirm. You know, I've used TRDs, you know, the Z-Man TRDs for years. Um, and you know, they, they have always been great, but um, can't ignore what's being caught on these at the moment. And uh, yeah, I had to get amongst it, I had to give it a go. They come in this size and I love this colour. Um, I'm kind of intrigued by the brighter colours though, to be honest, because uh, it only occurred to me the other day that I've never fished um, a bright worm on a Ned Rig. It's, I've just not done it. I've always fished the natural colours, um, by Zeman, and uh, the natural TRDs, uh, the smaller and the larger ones. Um, this, I think, in terms of size, this is somewhere in between. But again, it's really elastic. Um, impressed with the jig head that it comes on, actually. Really nice, rounded jig head, perfect weight. And those hooks, they're as sharp as you like. They really are. Just tightening up to it. Pretty much trying not to even move it. getting right into dusk now so if we're gonna get one it feels like we're gonna get one now I always fish right into last knockings wherever I can it's really you know those low light levels that's kind of what you're looking for and uh, it's funny, I've been having more success 
Um, since I went back to fishing dusk rather than dawn, although I'm still doing the occasional early morning. Not that it's that early at this time of year, but um, yeah, for, because of filming and stuff like that, I was trying to catch them at dawn when the light was getting better rather than worse. I wasn't having the results. I've switched back to fishing dusk. And uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but I certainly uh, I've been doing a bit better. What I might share with you actually is a little poll that I did on Instagram. Um, I asked my fellow perch fishermen whether they preferred to fish for perch at dawn or dusk, you know, which they'd had a better result in. And um, I'm going to share the results on screen now of that. Um, the results would suggest that more people have a result at dusk as opposed to dawn. So that's something to think about. So I'm running out of light and I'm running out of power on the GoPro as well. I think I've got about another 20, 25 minutes before it's going to be too dark. I will keep going. Hope for that last cast whacker. I'm known to have about a hundred last casts, so fingers crossed. <laughs> Check this out. Got something a bit special. Look at that. Three pound four ounce, taken on the Ned rig. As you can see, fishing right into dusk. Um, fishing super slow, hardly moving it. Um, big up Matt Woods, just tightening up to it. Really, hardly moving it at all. If you haven't tried the Ned rig, try the Ned rig, especially in this cold weather. £3.4, what a beast. Try the Ned rig. Chuffed to bits with that. That was a fantastic fish taken on the Ned right at dusk. Wow, unreal. But what I'm going to share with you now is something that really is a bit special. On the quiet, I've been visiting a venue that's got a fairly low stock of very big fish. Now, when I, met, when I say big perch, I mean big, big perch. I've been lucky enough to have a few from there in the past. They've gone over four pounds. So when I say I broke my PB, then you know something special's coming. And I, I, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you now. Here we go, another lure session. Look at the state of the boot. This will be yet another session on here. Um, it's prime time now. We're just starting to lose the light. Don't think I'm doing anything wrong. You know, fishing how I've always fished and I've always done well and picked up fish along the way. But things are a little bit barren at the moment. I've got to be honest. So there you go. You probably can't see anything. I fished right into dark. I fished really hard again. Uh, nothing, not even a touch. First light, a real windy one this morning. Big fish weather apparently. Just waiting for these fish to switch on. I'm sure they will at some point. I just got to make sure I'm here when they do. Here again. It's been so tough here, it really has. So tough. Still going, you never know. January it is at the moment, it's quite mi really mild actually, incredibly mild.
Yeah, up and on that creature bait. Should have a little sling over there. Yeah, it's not looking good again. Don't even want to tell you how many blanks I've had in a row now. It's embarrassing. It's, uh, really is trying to grind one out. I mean, it, it is just trying to grind one, one fish. I mean, I, I fished it quite hard last year and only had a few. I think it was about maybe, I don't know, three maybe. But two of them were over four pound. So, ah, <laughs> uh, it's just how it is. You know. And again, it's not happened. It's starting to get really tough, you know. Really tough. Uh, I'm going to stick with it, but it's getting really tough. Back on the Ned rig. Um, the only reason I'm on it, to be honest, is because I know the area holds perch they kind of hold up here um so again i'm not searching as such because i think they're here oh, it's cold this morning got the wind right in my face first Dawn I've done for a little while on perch actually. There we go, we've got something. We've got something. Ah, it's bitten me off. No, hasn't it's dropped it? Oh, I hope that wasn't a perch because that felt good. That, that felt big. You know, and it, it wasn't so big it could have been a pike. You know? Ugh. Not, not lost many fish here. Normally if I hook them, I get them. That stings. Just hoping it was a small pike. Oh, if it was a perch, I'd die. I can't believe I lost one. That was quite close in as well. Never mind, get back out there. I'm not joking, if that was a perch, it was big. It's not, not the sort of place you want to lose a fish, it really isn't. I felt the line, it's not, that's not damaged. Oh, I just hope it wasn't one of the big perch that are in here. It's a bit of a ball breaker at the best of times, so uh, that makes that sting a little bit more. I feel a bit sick. Here we go, it's dusk and I'm back. I'm a stubborn bugger, I really am. Lost one in this swim this morning. And uh, yeah, I'm not having it. Not having it. I'd cast out there. That's where I cast this morning when I had that hit. Water's quite deep. Let it get to the bottom. And then very slowly bringing it back. On the Ned rig, purely because it's a fish holding area, I know it is. So I'm not really searching. They hold up here, I know they do, because I've had them out of this area a fair amount. So. not got my searching lures on. I 
suspect they're here and I'm just trying to get a hit. wind coming into my face. It's not enjoying. Right, oh, I've got a fish. I think it's a pike. Please don't come off. Please don't come off. Oh, oh, it's big. Oh, it's big. Let's have a look. Whoa, that is big. Come on. Now, I'm not kidding you. That is a very, very big perk. Taken on the squirm. Whoa. I knew they were there, I knew it. Look at that beast. That is a big, big perch. The Ned rig coming good again. Absolutely awesome. Look at that for a beast. Beast. Ginormous. All a four pound that, I think. We're gonna weigh it now. It's in a plastic bag. Let's go for four six, four pound six, new PB. Absolutely awesome. Oh my God. New PB, not even joking. This thing's huge. I mean, look, look at it. On the Ned rig, on the squirm. Um, I've been mixing it up using the TRDs and the squirms. Um, only really just got the squirms. Started using them and what a first fish to have. Oh my gosh. Four pound six. A new PB. I mean, look at him. Oh, look. Oh. I mean, look at him. He is prehistoric. What an absolute beast. Really, really slow again. Hit it at my feet. Lost one here this morning, absolutely gutted. You don't want to lose fish here. Not when it can produce fish like that. I mean, look at it. Oh my, oh, unreal. <laughs> Incredible, right? Absolutely amazing. So that was a genuine sequence of events right the way through December and January. I'd had lots and lots of blanks, which isn't unusual when you're fishing for big fish like that. But what is interesting is that my fortunes changed as soon as I moved to the Ned Rig. You know, was it coincidence? I don't know, I'll let you decide, but I mean, wow. What an absolutely fantastic fish, unbelievable. So now we've done the Cheb Rig, we've done Jig Heads, we've done the Ned Rig, um, I was hoping to do the drop shot, so let's see, you know, I've really got to get back on the river, I think, and locate some fish first using shads, and then, you know, if I do get lucky and I do land on some, I'll be able to show you the drop shot. But that's the end of the Ned Rig video. If you enjoyed it, then please do subscribe and like and all that stuff. Not really sure what I'm going to be fishing for next, to be honest, but in the meantime, enjoy your fishing and be lucky.